one phrase that white girls like to proudly proclaim. And that is once you go black, you don't go back. Basically, what this means is that once a Caucasian female, or once a female, really, has a sexual experience with a black man, she won't be interested in going back to dating white guys or any other race of male, uh, you know, on account of the wild, crazy sexcapade she had with a brother. Now, I'm not a white girl, so I can't really speak to whether or not this is true. However, I do have a saying to piggyback off of that one, and it rings true in this regard. This is once you go black, sweetheart, you can't go back. The reason I say that is that females are, they are highly influenced by perceived social pressure, whether they admit it or not. All of her decisions, all of their decisions are based on all of them, you know, from, from what they wear to where they work, the cars they drive in their minds are heavily scrutinized by just about everyone they know. Now, of course, this isn't really the case. Okay. A friend of hers might comment on her new shoes or the fact that she needs a new job or that her boyfriend's a fucking loser. But after that 45-second conversation, her friend isn't thinking about her anymore. She's thinking about herself. Well, the problem is, is that females don't understand this. They're under the impression that everyone all around them, men and women are like, are constantly judging everything they do all the time as though they have nothing else to do other than watch and talk about her and her only. Now, this, of course, speaks to the extreme sol- solipsism of the female species in this part of the world. More importantly, it's the reason that when they mess with black guys, a lot of them feel like they can't date white guys anymore. In her mind, if she's seen with a brother, she knows she's probably off limits. So let's ask another question here. Why are white girls considered to be off limits by other white guys if they know she's fucked with niggas? Well, this is easy. Because white men show and tell them that once they are marked as a mud shark or a coal burner, right? She is then considered undateable, unfuckable, unmarriable, etc. Now, white men would never admit this out loud or in a group. But black men, they perceive black men to be a threat to them in terms of sexual market value. Guys, I'm here to tell you, white guys are at the top of the sexual market food chain. What this means is that all things being equal, white girls prefer white men. Listen, a resident TSR hater, Ralph Hayes, once famously said, you're wrong. If a white girl came home with LeBron James, her parents would be cool with it. Yes, they would. He's LeBron fucking James. But if she came home with a white LeBron James, right? If she came home with maybe Gordon Hayward, guess what? They would still be cool. And if given a choice, hey, mom, do you want me to marry LeBron or do you want me to marry Gordon Hayward? 15 times out of 10, white parents are going to say, you need to marry Gordon Hayward, sweetheart. But conventional wisdom in their circles is that man for man, black men are physically superior, we have more game, and we are much better between the sheets than they are. Again, this is conventional wisdom in their circles. I'm not white, right? So, I I mean, listen, I can't say whether or not, I, I mean, I can't tell you what goes on in these conversations, but their actions when they find out that white girls that fuck with niggas would lead me to believe that this is what they think. Now, whether or not this is true doesn't really matter. The fact is that mainstream media paints black males as the static alpha males who generate tingles with every interaction. Then, of course, you factor in interracial porn, right? Where every black male porn actor has a, dude, they got a 19-inch cock which further perpetuates the big black cock myth fetish, right? You factor all that in, dude, it's no wonder white dudes stay away from white girls who've come to the dark side even once in their lives. So rather than admitting the truth about their sexual market options, white girls use the word don't in place of can't to give themselves and the world the impression that they'd go back to dating white guys if they wanted to, knowing full well they probably couldn't if Word got out about her proclivities to commingle with niggas, as pointed out in the chat by Kyle Mitchell. Thank you, Kyle, for doing your best ETF 42 impression. Right? Listen, if nobody finds out that she's fucking niggas, she's good. Soon as one white dude sees her with a black dude, it's a wrap. Dude, look, listen, look at any white girl's Facebook profile. 
if you see one picture of her with a black man that she's made public, every other picture after that is with a black man. Guess what? Because white dudes are not fucking with her. Now, here's another question. Is this about skin tone? Well, in short, no. And I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I'm a black man. I'm 6'1", I'm actually 6'1", uh, 235 pounds now. Yeah, there you go. But if I were interested in a woman, if I approached her, set up a meetup, and then I listened to her swoon about her ex-boyfriend who was 6'5", right, 250 pounds, 3% body fat, who was worth seven figures and had a 12-inch cock, I wouldn't set up a date. I wouldn't set up a second race, Guess or a second date. Guess what? His race would be of little to zero consequence. Whether this mythical man were black, white, Asian, Hispanic, that wouldn't matter. The fact that I don't measure up statistically with her ex, that would keep me away, not his race. I'm 6'1", I'm not 6'5". I'm 235, I'm not 250, right? I'm probably 15% body fat. I'm not 3% body fat. I'm not worth seven figures, and I don't have a 12-inch cock. White men live the same make-believe scenario every time they see a good-looking white girl with a black guy in public. No, they can't assume that his net worth, they, they can't assume what his net worth is, but if he's in decent shape, they automatically assume that he's fucking her like a porn star with his two-foot dick. In his mind, he knows, he thinks that he'll never be able to fuck her or take her on the emotional roller coaster rides that he, the black man, appears to be doing. If he saw a pretty white girl with a white guy who was tall, good-looking, and self-assured, guess what? He'd have the same assumptions, right? If Listen, if a white girl, I'll put you in this scenario. Scenario A, if I'm with Devin and we're walking down the street hand in hand and a white guy sees us, Devin's off limits as far as he's concerned. <laughs> Donovan's probably fucking the dog shit out of her, and I am. Donovan probably has his shit together, and I am. Donovan probably has his game together. I do. Donovan has a 12-inch dick. I don't have a 12-inch dick, right? Like, he makes all these assumptions. Some of the assumptions are true, but again, that's not the way it goes. Scenario B. If Devin's walking down the street hand-in-hand hand with Gordon Hayward, guess what? She's still off limits. Why? Not because he's white. Because he's Gordon fucking Hayward. That's why. So this scarlet letter, quote-unquote, has more to do with the perceived persona of black men and less to do with our skin tone. So, why do white girls date black guys? A while back, I did a, an episode called, Why Do Parents Discourage Their Teens from Interracial Dating? And in that episode, I stated that if white fathers showed their daughters what a strong, masculine head of household was, rather than allowing themselves to be bossed around and marginalized by their wives their daughters would be far less likely to date outside of their race, namely black guys. Another element that I pointed out was that white fathers know that if their white daughters had a reputation for, for dating black men or black boys in high school, she would essentially take herself out of the running to secure a high-value white male, at least in the city or country they live in. One of the main reasons pretty young white girls date black guys is because their fathers are pussies. <laughs> Listen, let's just call it what it is, right? What, when the most influential males in their lives, their fathers, are poor examples of what strong, masculine men look, sound, and act like, they're going to look elsewhere for a man who would lead them, keep them in line, demand their best. This is where black men come into play in a lot of cases. White guys can say whatever they want. They can give the politically correct answer if asked in public, but they know the score, which is that if their daughters date, fuck, hook up with, marry, or have a baby with black men, which would eliminate any plausible deniability, her options would be greatly limited in this regard. It's the same concept as a black man who dates white women. A black man who dates white women likely had a poor excuse of a mother. He didn't, she didn't show him what, you know, what, what a docile, feminine, submissive woman was. So he looks to date outside of his race. Black women, listen, black women get all up in arms when their black sons date white girls because deep down inside, she knows she has failed him as a mother. This is why white guys lose their shit when their daughters date black men because deep down, he knows he has failed his daughter. This particular axiom, once you go black, you can't go back or you don't go back. 
this is the quintessential example of a of women not acknowledging the truth about their real status in the sexual marketplace if they are ever ever labeled a mud shark. And that truth is that once she is labeled as such, short of moving to another country or another state, starting anew with new friends, erasing any and all Facebook pictures of social media, she will be deemed as off limits by white men. And I would agree with this assertion. White girls can act like they have the option to go back if they choose to by proudly proclaiming that they won't. But I've always said that women are far more aware aware of red pill truth than men will ever be. And it's for this reason and this reason alone that they white girls understand very clearly that once they go black, they cannot go back.